very happy to have Katie with us. And uh, tonight she's going to talk about utilizing technology to enhance cattle management practices. And so, Katie, I'm going to turn it over to you. And um, and then we'll, like I said, if you guys have any questions, uh, type them in the chat. And we'll, if it's urgent, I'll stop Katie and, and ask it. Otherwise, we'll wait till the end. Katie, it's all yours. All right. Well, thank you all for logging on again this week. Um, when we were picking out what we were going to talk about during these series, uh, Dr. Bullock noticed that Dr. Limkuler and I were both going to talk about technology. And so we assured him that we weren't talking about the same type of technology. So I'll promise you all that this will be different than what you heard last week. So I want to start with asking you a question and I want you to think about what comes to mind when you hear the term precision agriculture. Likely, it's something that looks similar to this photo or, or has something, some aspect of something that's, that's shown in this photo. And here's a, a more traditional definition of what precision agriculture is, but really it's the use of sensors or certain data analytics and, tech, and certain um, machinery practices that can help us overcome variation within a farming practice. So. Um, if we think about uh, differences in soil types within a field or across a field, that's really where precision agriculture got its start. And so the, the row crop sector of agriculture has really taken off with this over the last you know, several decades at this point. And we've sort of been lagging behind when it comes to the livestock sector. And, and especially within that, within the beef cattle industry, we've kind of uh, been having to play catch up uh, when it comes to precision agriculture. And so now I ask you, what if precision agriculture looks something like this? These are um, a group of our first calf heifers here in Princeton earlier this winter. And if you look where their red circles are around their ears, those cattle are all equipped with what I call a smart ear tag or um, a cow manager tag is the actual name of that product. And uh, that's a blown up image there for you on the left. And those are kind of like a smartwatch or a Fitbit for cattle. And so that's kind of what precision agriculture can look like for uh, beef cattle production. And we're gonna talk a lot more about that technology and some others as we get going. But I kind of wanted to establish what, um, what we're talking about when we talk about using uh, technology. So the term precision livestock farming was coined over a decade ago now in some of the research, but it's sort of now emerging because we're starting to get products from research and development all the way out to, um, to cattle producers to be able to implement. And so when we talk about precision livestock farming, what we're talking about is use of uh, camera images or sounds or some sort of sensor like those ear tags that allow us to get real time automated and continuous uh, data that can help us manage things like health, reproduction, uh, welfare, as well as the animal's environment. So how does precision livestock farming work? And how does that workflow, what does that workflow look like? So um, if we start over here on the left, we've got an animal and perhaps that animal's wearing something like that smart ear tag or We've got some sort of camera system monitoring that animal or that animal's environment. And th those technologies, they're sending data to, to a computer or a smartphone device. But the problem is, is a lot of times that data in its rawest form is not useful. Um, it's not gonna be uh, pretty, it's not gonna be easy, it's not gonna be, allow you to easily make a decision um, about your management practices. So that data has got to be sent to something like a smartphone app or perhaps to a, a company that provides some data um, analysis services. And what they do is they take that raw data that's not usable and put it into a form that's useful, sends it back to our producers. Uh, you all can look at it potentially on, a, like I said, a smartphone app. And then we can uh, utilize this technology um, for early detection of things like illnesses or lameness and help us start making some uh, management decisions pretty easily. So I think it's really important to touch on um, 
this precision livestock te technology or PLF technology, because um, I always get questions when I talk about it, you know, is this going to replace what we do day in and day out? And can, can some piece of, of data or electronics really do it better than somebody that's been raising cattle their entire life? And, and I'll tell you, that's not, where we're, that's not where we're at, and that's not what this technology is here for. The technology is really to help you um, enhance the existing management practices that you have. It's not going to make up for other holes in your management. So um, what I mean by that is if you've got a ear tag that tells you you've got sick cattle, but you don't have a good nutrition program, that's, that ear tag is not going to help you. We've got to make sure that we've got those fundamentals covered. And then we can start really using this type of technology to hone in on, on our management practices. I also like to think of this technology as um, having an opportunity to be our eyes and our ears while we're away from our cattle. Um, so if we are away from the farm, even if we've got um, a neighbor coming in to check on things for us, some of this technology can give you a little peace of mind uh, if you're away. The other thing is, is a lot of our producers, you have other enterprises that you're running. And so there's gonna be times of the year when cattle are taking a back seat because you've got to get um, corn in the ground or you've got to get corn harvested. And so having this type of technology can, again, give you a little bit of peace of mind sometimes uh, when we've got other busier times of the year. So that's really where I see some of this technology fitting in and where I really think it, it can help us moving forward. And again, helping us without um, replacing years of experience of managing cattle. So back in 2018, there was a survey that was published and the survey was conducted um, nationally with cow-calf producers. And one of the questions that was asked to them is to rank um, challenges to the beef cattle industry. And so over here on that left hand column, I have some of those challenges that they listed. There was 15 total challenges. So the number in parentheses there is where that number where that uh, challenge fell on the list. And I used only the ones I felt like could really apply to precision livestock farming. Um, some of the other ones that I don't have on here are things like access to foreign markets um, or land availability. Um, those are much larger, equally important issues, but not necessarily a place where precision livestock farming is gonna help us solve that issue. So then over here on the right-hand column, I've got the percentage of producers that rated a particular challenge is one of their top two challenges they saw facing the beef industry. So right off the bat, those top two, cow-calf health and reproductive health, right off the bat, I hope by the end of the night, you see that we've, there are some technologies out here, out there currently that can help us get there. I think following behind that with biosecurity and disease prevention, as well as we've got antimicrobial resistance, and lameness slash structural soundness, a lot of those things are all coming back to identifying some type of animal health concerns and using potentially using some technology to help us there. So one of the real places that we have some opportunity with technology is with the early detection of illness. So this is some uh, data from a, uh, from a feedlot trial and what they did is they looked at cattle after they were harvested and determined if they had lung lesions at, at harvest, they went back and looked at what that, those animals' performance looked like, regardless of if they had been treated or not treated for bovine respiratory disease. And so what they found was that cattle that had some sort of lung lesion had about a 0.2 pound per day decrease in average daily gain. What was also interesting was that 68% of the cattle that were never treated had some sort of lung lesion. And these cattle um, were pulled with traditional pin riders. So again, using human observation, and clearly we missed some cattle that had some kind of underlying health condition going on. This other study down here, they used probably some of the first um, precision livestock farming data or tools that were out there. They used a smart feed bunk that could detect uh, when cattle were coming. Uh, to the bunk, how often they were coming there and um, how long they were um, consuming their meal for. And what they found was that if they would look at that data, 
and look at changes in how often those cattle were eating or how much they were eating, they could identify cattle, sick cattle four days sooner than trained pen riders. So again, that's some of the earliest data probably out there that shows some technology um, might be able to help us more efficiently catch early detection of illnesses. So like I said, I, I promised we'd talk more about these smart ear tags, um, mostly because that's some of the um, data that we've got out there, a lot of it has been done with using some of these ear tags. So like I said, they're kind of like smart watches for cattle. So they track animal behavior in the sense that they track uh, levels of activity. And when they've got certain algorithms, so when an animal does something that's not typical of that animal's behavior, that might suggest that they're, something's wrong with that animal, that they're not feeling well, It'll actually, they can send an alert to your smartphone. The other thing that these uh, devices can do is detect estrus or detect heat. Um, and some of them can also detect, run, use ear surface um, temperature as another way to look at um, sending you health alerts. So um, there's multiple of these types of ear tags on the market currently. Um, like I said, we're gonna talk about cow manager because that's the, the work we've done has been with that um, tool, but there's also another one out there called Sense Hub, and there's probably many others out there on the market or coming to the market that all probably claim to do similar um, things. So these cow manager tags, like I said, they break down activity of, of that animal and report it to you, and when they see a change, that's when it triggers the, the technology to send you a health alert. So here's just a little more up close picture of one of our um, cows here at the station that's got one of these ear tags in her ear. Um, and this is actually not her data. This is some data that I had collected during my PhD work at Iowa State. Um, but this is basically a screenshot of my cell phone uh, screen when I'm in the app for this product. And so um, what I'm actually looking at here is daily activity of that particular animal. So each of those columns is a day. And then within each column, the colored bars are for a different um, activity. So either time spent ruminating in blue, time spent eating in green, time spent being non-active, active, or highly active. And it's kind of unclear exactly how the technology deciphers between active and highly active, but uh, as I'll show you in some of the data, um, we can tell some differences when cattle have, um, have some illness going on. Um, so this is actually an animal here that did alert for a health alert, and you'll see that if you look around November 27th down there, November 28th and going on, that the blue bars got a lot smaller all of a sudden, and the green bars got a lot smaller, and the yellow bars got a lot bigger, which are all indications of an animal that's, that's not doing well or has something, some kind of issue going on, and is an indicator that maybe we need to pull that animal um, get a, a temperature on it and see if we've got need to uh, treat that animal. So I'll be honest, when this technology first came out, it was actually developed for dairy cows. So I was a little skeptical if it was going to work very well in uh, beef steers, which is what we were using it in at the time. And so um, a undergrad student that worked in the lab that I was training in at the time did a, an honors project and got this data published. And so the student went out and she sat in a barn and, and watched and observed cattle and recorded their behavior. And so she recorded how many times they ruminated, how much time they spent eating, and then she defined what was active and non-active to her. And then she went back and she looked at that and compared it to what the cow manager tags said those animals were doing at the time. And so if we look at our, our drawing of our uh, targets over here, ideally we'd like to have high precision and high accuracy where everything's sort of right there in the middle on top of each other, right in the bullseye. And so if you look at that rumination graph, that's pretty spot on. And so that was actually really exciting for us to see um, how well the sensor and the human observation agreed with each other. What was also interesting is that the other um, behaviors on here, although those lines are not sitting uh, right on top of each other, so we may be missing some precision, 
the shape of those lines are pretty close to each other. They're pretty parallel to one another. And so it made us feel like there's probably some accuracy there as well. And so it was enough to, to kind of inspire me to want to see what else we could do with these tags and what else we could figure out about that technology. So part of my PhD work, I wanted to um, use those cow manager tags, that technology, um, and see how well it did at detecting sick cattle. And so um, whenever I show this picture, I always have to apologize for how muddy those pins were. We had an absolute monsoon in Iowa the morning that we did this trial. So um, I, again, always apologize for that. But um, what we did is we put these cattle head uh, cow manager tags in their ears and we went through and um, we did what is called an LPS or a lipopolysaccharide challenge. And so what that is, is I've got a drawing here of some E. coli bacteria. Um, LPS is those little um, things that almost look like hair sticking up there. That's the LPS molecule, molecule and it is responsible for Kind of activating your immune system. So when you start to not feel good and you're, you know, you're starting to get sick early on and maybe you've spiked a fever all of a sudden and you just feel really down and out, it's probably the LPS on, on gram negative bacteria that can be responsible for part of that. And so what this allows us to do is, is in research, we can utilize this as a tool to study the immune system of cattle without it being a pathogen. Um, so this is extremely short-lived when we give it as an injection. These symptoms last for about six to eight hours, and then the cattle bounce right back. So we were actually measuring individual animal feed intake in this trial, and on challenge day, feed intake plummeted for those cattle that received LPS, but the very next day, they were right back up where they were and had fully recovered. So what we're really looking at is that really short window on the challenge day. So Within a pen of cattle, we gave four of them an injection of LPS, and two of them simply received an injection of saline. And I love this picture because it shows exactly um, how, this, how this tool works for us. And you can see that there's four cattle in that pen that have got their heads down. They're not up at the bunk eating or waiting to get up to that bunk to eat. Um, they're looking pretty, um, pretty puny and having a pretty rough day of it, whereas there are two pen mates there that had saline are up at the bunk and eating. So I, like I said, I was interested to see what the cow manager tags would say these cattle were doing. So these were just some of the initial um, screenshots I got off of the, um, the app on that day. And I'll tell you about four hours or so after we injected uh, these cattle, my phone blew up. We were getting all kinds of health alerts. So I felt pretty confident that we were going to be able to detect illness or detect the sickness behavior in these cattle. And so if you look at these two screenshots, one of these is from an animal that received LPS and one's from an animal that received saline. And these are actually hourly um, bars instead of daily, like I showed you earlier. So um, you can see that those cattle that received uh, LPS, their rumination drops off pretty dramatically, um, but only for a short time. And that yellow bar, that non-active bar, becomes incredibly increased compared to uh, where it had been and also compared to the cattle that received um, saline. So I was pretty excited to, to see that data uh, live as it, was, as it was coming in, and I was pretty excited to get that uh, analyzed. And so when we actually analyzed that data, you know, I said that... Um, we gave four cattle LPS within a, a treatment or within a pen. And so we gave some of them a lower dose of LPS and some of them a higher dose of LPS. And so in theory, if we got a, gave a higher dose of LPS, they should have a, a more uh, robust immune response. They should um, be, be feeling worse. But really in all of our data and almost everything we looked at, we couldn't tell a difference between a low and a high LPS treatments, but we could tell a difference between those that received the LPS and those that got saline. And so what we're looking at here um, is area under the curve. So basically 
what I did is I graphed out how much time for each of those behaviors the cattle all spent, and I calculated um, the number underneath that. So if an area under the curve or the AUC value is uh, bigger, then an animal spent more time doing that behavior. If it's smaller, they spent less time do doing that behavior. So if you look over at the behaviors over here, everything that has a single asterisk was something that the tag was able to decipher a difference between saline and LPS. What was really interesting was that the tag was the only piece of, of data that we got back that could tell a difference between low and high LPS, and that was for time spent ruminating. And so we really think that that time spent ruminating is a pretty key factor to how this technology works and how it detects um, illness behavior in cattle. So what about detecting estrus? So um, this is some work that was actually done at uh, UK with dairy cattle using this technology. And I'll tell you that Dr. Anderson would back this slide up, I believe, with what he has seen using the technology in beef cows. Um, but they basically had dairy cows that were exhibiting estrus or not, and then looked at what the tag was giving them for a time spent being highly active, ruminating, and eating as well as that ear surface temperature. And so if you look over in that right-hand column, p-values, anything less than 0.05 means, yeah, there was truly something different there. So we see that for everything except for that ear surface temperature, which is kind of interesting because um, in my studies at Iowa State that I was just showing you, we had the same, um, we also did not see an effective ear surface temperature um, when we would have expected there to be a difference due to that LPS injection. So um, again, sort of some similar results there, um, but we are seeing that at that time spent doing different activities, these tags are able to, to maybe detect some differences across um, different animals at different time points. So what about lameness detection? Uh, I think this would be a really powerful tool. There's actually not been a lot of data with the ear tag based data loggers or these ear tag cow manager type tags um, for lameness detection. There are, there is quite a bit of work in dairy cattle using a tag that, or a, a monitor that goes on the leg um, for a beef animal that gets out on pasture and walks around a lot more, anything that's grazing. I don't know how useful something like that would be or how, um, but there is some limited data with the ear tags um, where they showed that the cow manager tags were not able to detect lameness in a, a study of dairy cows. However, um, the authors of that trial do say that um, there was pretty small amounts of lameness overall. And so they think that there just wasn't a, a severe enough case of lameness for their tag technology to be able to pick it up. So, um, I do wonder if, um, and I think that's an area where we can do some more, more research looking at, can these ear tags detect lameness? Um, I've got a, you know, a case here at, here at Princeton last, uh, last December, we had a, a bull in the pasture who ended up um, becoming lame. And so we've got a great team down here and they check our cattle every day and and they found that, that that bull was lame. He was out in the pasture with some of our replacement heifers. And so he uh, got pulled pretty quickly and we got a new bull in there. Well, come March, Dr. Anderson came down to uh, preg check our herd. And when we got to that group, we had about 28 or 29 uh, heifers in that group. And we had five or six of them that were open. And when we looked back at that data, we saw that there was some cattle that were bred early on, and then there was a big open space, and then there was cattle that were bred later on. And so if we had had a cow manager tag on that bull, or had some type of technology potentially that could detect lameness, it might have saved us having five open heifers out of that group, because I can assure you they weren't the bottom five of the group. Um, you know, there was some good ones in that group, and that was really unfortunate for us. Um, and you know that same type of thing can happen. But like I said, this is to enhance management practices. So if we're not doing some of the baseline things like getting a breeding soundness exam, then having this technology is not gonna help us um, if, that, if that bull is not able to do his job in the first place. But I do think that there's a place for 
um, looking out for lameness detection and, and getting some technology out there that can help us with that. So uh, usually a question we get is how does this system work? And so I, this is an aerial map of the station down here at Princeton. I'll also add that we have these tags on cattle up in uh, Woodford County as well. Um, but this is sort of a, a view of what our setup looks like. So that blue star down there, that's our main building. And each of those red stars is an approximate location of where we have one of these poles that you see. Um, and these basically are a, a transponder that are all solar powered. And so they kind of piggyback off of each other. So even at this very furthest corner of our pastures, kind of up there on the top right of your screen, um, it, piggy, it sends a signal back down, all the way back down to the hill um, where our herd manager, Blair, has a computer in her office um, that runs the cow manager software. And then we all have um, an app on our phone. So we also get alerts um, if there's health alerts um, or if it thinks that an animal's coming into heat, it can send us an alert right to our um, phone. And like I said, it's basically sending that um, message through each of those, those um, transponders. So, um, you know, a lot of times two people ask, you know, what does something like this cost? And, and the tags are, you know, somewhere in around one or $200, but they last for five years um, or they have a five-year warranty, let me put it that way. And, um, and they can be used from animal to animal. So you can strategically place them on say your bulls or your heifers or something like that. Um, not maybe it's something that you don't put on your whole group of animals right off the bat. Um, we use it again as a, a research tool and, and use it to help us monitor the herd. So most of our herd has them. Um, also a factor that's gonna um, contribute to the cost of, of setting up a system like this is how extensive it is. Um, so if you thought that you only wanted to, to maybe be able to reach some of those pastures right around say a barn or a dry lot facility, you wouldn't necessarily need as much equipment and hardware that we have set up here. Um, because if you've ever uh, been out, been down to Princeton, you'll know, you can probably tell that's a pretty good distance um, from the very back pasture all the way up to our office building. So um, if you, depending on how extensive of a network you're trying to set up, that'll also greatly impact the cost of getting some of this technology on your farm. So now I want to move in and talk a little bit about um, other camera based systems. Um, so a lot of times when we first think about uh, cameras, we kind of think of a security based camera, but uh, cameras are, are current are always evolving. So um, I think that cameras can sometimes be the easiest um, PLF type technology to um, bring on to a farm. And so this may be something as simple as a security type camera that allows you to have an app on your phone so you can peer in if you've got animals up in a barn or up close to a barn uh, you can go in and take a look at those animals um, there's a lot of different camera technology out there now and a lot of them um, there are some that have been designed for farming operations so they're designed to be as wireless as possible and realize that connectivity may be an issue um, these can be pretty cost effective However, they can also be pretty expensive. And so you gotta really pay attention to what you're picking out. Also, I caution you to make sure that you get a decent quality on a camera, um, because if you get something with pretty poor quality, you might get an image back that resembles a, a early 2000s cell phone camera image. And if you're trying to, to tell if you've got um, a sick animal or an injured animal or even an animal that's calving, you maybe have a harder time being able to pick those animals out. So resolution on the camera system is pretty important. Also, um, being able to uh, have that camera operate successfully 24-7, because if we are going to be using this type of system to help us monitor our animals, it's probably going to be overnight or early mornings when we're wanting to look in at those animals. So making sure we've got something that can work in low light as well. There's also on drone based camera systems that are being utilized and those are there's a, several groups so one of the um, ag engineering faculty here 
at UK is doing a lot of work um, in this area. And so I won't touch on it too much, but um, you know, drone-based technolo technology has also come a long way. And so we've got opportunities to use that uh, technology to not only observe our cattle, but uh, there's even technology out there that can assess um, whether an animal's got a fever. Um, and so uh, by using some type of thermo in imaging software. Um, so again, camera technology continues to evolve. Uh, whatever you purchase now may seem outdated even in a couple years. So um, I just encourage you if that's somewhere you'd like to start with using technology um, to really do some research and make sure you read reviews and that kind of thing on a product. Um, if it's any kind of product that has software to it or that's gonna do some type of analysis or image analysis, make sure it's a product that's got some research behind it. So um, one of those products that's um, got, that does some image analysis for you, um, there are some camera systems out there that estimate body weight. And so um, they actually use, utilize technology from a um, pretty common uh, video game platform. So I'm not a video game player, but if you um, are familiar with, or if your kids have an Xbox with the Kinect software, um, that type of camera system has been used to help us to um, estimate body weight in cattle. So this is actually work that used that system. And I was curious, cause I, like I said, I don't play video games. So I wasn't sure what um, the, that type of software or our hardware would run. And so um, I looked up, you could buy a used Connect for $14.99 on eBay, all the way up to $150 or for a newer one. Um, obviously they're using that, but you'd have to have some type of software to do um, some type of program to be able to get this type of analysis for you. But basically what these researchers did is they took a picture using that software of a, of a steer in the chute. And so that animal standing here and all those arrows going across the top of their body there are different measurements that they took. And then they took, they did a bunch of statistics and came up with an equation where they could use this number one measurement and use that to predict body weight. And so then they tested out their system. And so what we've got over here, all these dotted dots and lines over here, if we look at the panels that are called, um, labeled A, B, and C, A is gonna be all the cattle that they use, B is the Angus-based cattle that they use, and C is the Nolor cattle that they were testing on. And so across that bottom line there, that's the predicted body weight. And then on the y-axis is the observed body weight. And so the closer a black dot is to that line running up the diagonal line, the more accurate that the technology was at predicting the body weight um, relative to what that animal actually weighed. Um, and this is for live body weight. They actually also did it on a carcass weight basis as well and saw some pretty similar results there too. Um, so that's um, a really good example of, of some camera-based technology that gives us some, some pretty useful data. The problem is, is that this is a research product, a research trial, and not necessarily a, a product that you all can currently go out and buy. And that's, we'll talk about that being one of the challenges with precision livestock farming technology is getting it the next step. There are some commercially available camera systems, though, that do the same thing, that estimate body weight um, from a camera photo off of a smartphone. So one of those is um, a product called Beefy, and that started in Europe out of Hungary and actually started for weighing beef cattle because um, they recognize that it can be cumbersome to get all the cattle up and get them weighed and can be stressful. And so that's why they this company started trying to develop a a hands-off approach, if you will, to estimating body weight. Um, so you get, um, you have a smartphone, and then if you see there's a little white cord plugged in there, that's the only hardware that this um, product utilizes, and you snap the picture, and uh, you have to click a few buttons in there, but it pops out an estimated body weight. Um, but I caution you, because um, this type of product, some of these products don't have research behind them, so. Uh, we don't really know how accurate they are. They don't have third-party um, 
research done on them. And so that's really important when we start looking at utilizing these technologies is that we've been able to vet these, some of these practices and make sure that the technology is doing what we think it's doing. So I also wanted to touch on just some other areas of um, PLF, just to sort of get your minds rolling a little bit about what's out there and what might be coming down the pipeline. Um, precision feeding and watering systems. This is um, a big thing, especially in the feedlot sector, but um, what these are allowing us to do is get individual intakes from animals. Also, some of these technologies um, have a way of, they actually involve a, a scale system. So when that animal steps up to get a drink of water, it's taking a body weight measurement of that animal. Um, we also, there's also a company out of Australia that developed a camera-based system where you can simply drive by a feed bunk and it analyzes how much feed is left in there. So to help us with really efficiently doing some bunk management practices. Um, another huge area of uh, precision livestock farming is going to be animal identification and, and traceability. You know, as our industry moves towards traceability, um, some of these PLF uh, technologies I think are going to play a big role in how that happens. Uh, this next one I uh, was actually found a little humorous when I was reading about it um, because the idea that I could be sitting at home and I get an automated phone call to let me know that a cow is calving seemed a little humorous to me but there is technology out there. Um, this product claims to you put a device in a in the cow's vagina a couple weeks before they calve when that animal goes to calve, the device falls out and it sends an alert to a, a box that you have set up in the barn and that box automatically sends you a text and a phone call to your phone um, to let you know that they're calving. But again, I, I um, encourage you all to, to make sure you're doing your research on these products and make sure that, that there's re third party research behind some of these. Um, the other one that, that's been kind of popular as it's kind of reemerged back on the market is the Whisper stethoscope, and that's from uh, Merck Animal Health. And what that does, it, al it allows you to go shoot side um, with an animal that has symptoms of bovine respiratory disease. And in a matter of just a few seconds, it um, scores lung tissue damage. Um, so it uses a um, scale of one to five. Um, five being the most um, morbid or the most severe uh, lung tissue damage and one being the least severe. And so it kind of allows us, it's a tool, especially when we've got cattle up in confinement or, or high risk calves that we've brought in. Um, that's another uh, tool that's out there, especially to help with things like bovine respiratory disease or pneumonia. So um, we've covered a lot and we talked a lot about some of the different options that are out there and some of them and, and a little more in depth because it's stuff that we have, it's technology we actually have data on. Um, so where do you go if you're interested in, in getting started with um, precision livestock farming technology? My number one um, goal, you know, piece of advice for you is to start simple and start small. Um, don't dive in off that deep end and, and get overwhelmed. Um, with the technology that's out there. There's a lot of technology, a lot of products being marketed. Um, and if we're not gonna make some decisions, some management decisions with that data, um, there's no point in, in spending the money on some of that technology. So um, start simple and small. Um, like I said, you know, something like the cow manager system, you know, if you wanted to put that on just a few animals um, to start, that might be a place to, to start or some type of camera system. Um, this isn't gonna be one size fits all. So it's something where you have to look at your operation and identify um, what you could use technology to help you with. And I think that's where extension plays a role in this is, is our ability to help, help you all identify some of those places. Um, it's important to be realistic about the dollar returns you might get on some of this technology. Uh, now, you know, in the scenario of our bull down here, if we had been able to, to catch his lameness in time before those heifers were, were cycling and get that other bull in there, that would have potentially saved us those five heifers, right? So um, it's one of those that it, you may not see the return on every head every year, 
um, but um, you it may still end up paying for itself. I also think about um, you know some of this technology's ability to predict calving if we've got heifers that um, maybe having some dystocia issues, if we had technology there that could um, alert us to that, especially if we've got jobs off the farm, um, you know, saving one heifer and a, and a calf could um, really, pay, you know, allow for a, a $100 piece of technology to pay for itself right there. Um, it's also hard for me to put a dollar amount on what it would give you in terms of peace of mind. Um, so that's another thing we got to think about when uh, we're looking at what um, this technology can do for us is if it can allow us to sleep a little bit more soundly at night at least maybe it's it's worth it in some way um, the other point i bring up is what's your current record keeping system like if you aren't currently keeping good records or having um, records kept electronically then that might be a, a first step to kind of move into using electronics and using technology to look at your data um, versus you know, like I said, trying to avoid data overload really. So there's quite a few obstacles to implementing um, precision livestock farming technology. And I will, I, while I'm an advocate for some of this technology, I'll also be honest with you and, and, know, and let you know that the cost will vary greatly across these different technologies. And it may not be worth it for you. And it may be a case where, um, you know, maybe some of this technology is utilized through extension um, and and maybe not something that each of each of you all have on your individual farms another issue with some of this technology is internet connectivity um, some of this type of technology requires continuous internet connectivity so you've got to have a good connection all the time others are where maybe you can bring out um, a hot spot close to the the sensors once a week and get all your data downloaded and saved that way. So it would allow you to basically have intermittent connectivity, you wouldn't have to have it all the time. Um, internet connectivity is going to continue to improve. And I think as technology is developed and marketed towards beef cattle producers, um, companies that are, doing, that are producing these products should have that in mind, um, knowing that, that most of our beef cattle producers are in a rural setting or in an extensive setting, you know, where we have animals out on pasture. Again, it's really important that we're actually gonna use the data and make changes to our management decisions. So um, if you are, are sitting there thinking, there's no way I'm gonna do anything different just because a, a smartphone app told me to do it, then perhaps this technology is not um, what's gonna benefit you the most. Um, reliability, there's a lot of new technologies out there. They haven't all been tested or vetted from a third party source. So um, I always just encourage you to be careful um, and, and really figure out what it is that you're getting and what it's gonna do for you. Um, the other area that's kind of a challenge is actually getting um, products to you all and utilized by, by producers. And so there's a lot of products that get developed, a lot of inventions out there that never make it uh, to production um, or they never get validated. Um, there are some that make it to commercial applications, so um, they make it out to the market, but adoption rates maybe even be lower. And so um, until we can really start adopting some of this technology, I think that will start to drive the technology that becomes available to us. So again, there's lots of opportunities out there. Uh, don't get overwhelmed, but be sure to, to do your research before you make any kind of investment. Um, you know, it's, it's a tight market out there right now in, in a lot of sectors of, of agriculture. And so um, the last thing I want you to do is, is to get starry eyed over some cool technology um, if it's not something that, that's really going to um, be worth it for your operation. Uh, use technologies that have have some of that proven research behind them because those technologies are out there and they do exist. Um, and I encourage you to work with your local county agents and your faculty because again, some of this technology um, may be something where your your agent may be able to have that technology um, and share it with you and allow you to be able to use it um, versus everybody having it on their uh, individual farms. So with that, um, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. 
Um, just a few housekeeping notes. Um, Dr. Lynn Pooler's uh, talk from last week is now up on YouTube. Also, there is the survey link for this week. Um, I really, we really appreciate you all um, continuing to fill out those surveys. They do help us with, with feedback from this event um, so we can continue to, to get good content out there for you. Um, the CAPE code, if you need that, is Beef Topper. And next week, we're going to continue this same time, same day of the week. Um, Dr. Chris Teutsch is going to join us and share um, approaches to reclaiming heavy use areas in our pastures. All right, Katie, thank you very much. Very, very informative. Um, we have a couple of questions now. Dr. Anderson and Dr. Lim Cooler kind of jumped on them, but uh, we need them for the record anyway and see if you had some other thoughts on them. Uh, Mr. Yoder asked, has the ear device been used to detect a female going into labor? Uh, um, actually, I haven't looked at that data, but Dr. Anderson has really looked at that technology from a repro side a lot more than I have at this point, so he may be a good one to ask on that. How about it, Dr. Anderson? You, you bet. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Um, we have had uh, the cow manager tags in our cows for two different calving seasons. And we've had some reliability and actually, uh, you know, we've seen up to 70% alerts on our calving, um, but they're not always super timely. And, and just to explain that just a little bit. So there, there are a few disadvantages or challenges would probably be a better way to put it uh, for the cow manager tags and some of those sensors. And number one, and this seems kind of, idiotic probably but you got to have really good wi-fi uh, because the signal goes from the cow manager tag up to a router and then it goes from a router and they've got to be within 300 feet of that router okay and then that router shoots it to another router which then uh, this is on both at both princeton and woodford and then that router relays it all the way up to the computer which then sends it into the cloud it runs all the way to the netherlands goes through their servers goes through their algorithms does the calculations comes all the way back and sometimes we'll get a two three four so even five hour delay uh, in the data sometimes it's nearly instantaneous um, and I don't, i'm not 100 percent sure why there's some variation um but but there is and so you know for the calving component of it, we get some pretty good predictions because, you know, cow, cows will sort off. Um, they, they're, they'll become a little bit more active, um, you know, in the, in the time right before they calve, and then and they don't ruminate as much. And like Dr. Van Valen said, the rumination is a very good indicator. And so you'll get a, an estrus alert, actually, um, right before these cows calve in many cases but not all. Okay. Um, and so it, we, we, fa we found it to be pretty reliable. I've got it in, uh, uh, one farm where, where the cows are predominantly, uh, uh, managed indoors. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're in they're four big barns and they do have access to some limited pasture, but the cattle come into the barns every day. Um, and that, the 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 owner there, he says it's a hundred percent on calving. Uh, we haven't uh, analyzed his data yet, uh, but he he is very adamant that uh, that uh, the cow manager tags and the alerts has saved him many calves. Um, hasn't hasn't been that reliable for us, but honestly, it's you know we are in a much more extensive system than they are. And then that that producer is, and so it, it's a little bit more difficult to manage the the data that way. Yeah, and I'll and I'll second that too on that five to six hour delay that you see sometimes. Um, in that study that we did, where we in, um, did those LPS injections, um, that stuff starts to work in them out five minutes. And if you caught me, I I said that my phone started to to blow up about four hours later. 
Um, so it definitely did take some time um, to, to take measurements and figure out that there was something going on. But again, we have a, a similar setup that that, that data has got to get up in the cloud out to the Netherlands and, and back over to the US. So um, definitely some, some limitations there um, if we've got connectivity issues. Okay, uh, Katie, somewhat, uh, this was, uh, it was such a softball, Dr. Lim Cooler could handle it. Uh, someone asked for the name of the, of the app and that's the, the Beefy app. Uh, I would like to comment on that real quick, though. Um, just in, in terms of uh, any, if any seed stock operators out there, uh, as Dr. Van Valen said, we're not there yet with this technology that you can use these types of of apps and and use that uh, in instead of scales for sending data in. Uh, like for genetic evaluation. So just, just be careful of that. Maybe we'll be there at some point in time, but uh, we're not there yet. You still need to run them across the scales. The other thing with that data, with that type of technology too, is um, they, de they don't have a claim for anything under five months. Um, so their, their current claims is that they don't have uh, data for uh, like birth weight, for example. So even more of a reason there to, to not uh, be careful or to be careful when you're looking at utilizing some of that data. Yeah. Um, another question, how well do the cow manager tags stay in the animal's ear? Good question. Um, so occasionally they will come out. Um, I've had it happen. Usually what happens is you get an alert on your phone. Um, that's what I call the, the black box or the death alert because it means that the animal hasn't moved. Um, and so what that really means is the tag has come out of their ear. Um, and so depending on what type of system you have, where if those cattle are up in confinement, uh, you can actually find them pretty easily with a magnet. Um, but if they're out on pasture, you might have a little bit harder time finding them. Um, but in general, they stay in the ears pretty well. Uh, haven't had too much of a problem with them coming out. That um, that kind of leads to another question: uh, Is are there any of the products such as Cattle Manager that detect heat uh, or have GPS capabilities? Yeah, so the Cattle Manager tag does not have GPS capabilities, but there are some other um, tools out there, some other type sensors that would that do claim to have that type of of use. Um, I can't speak to how well they work. I haven't used them. Um, but um, I do know that some of that technology does uh, claim to be out there. Okay, uh, Dr. Okay. Cooler is asking, what about cost of cow manager? Is there a one-time fee, annual access fee, or what is the fee structure for those? Um, I know you've got to you've got to pay for the the setup of your system up front, so all those uh, routers and transmitters and all that. And I, I really don't have a good price estimate for you on our system down here because again, and again, it, it's pretty extensive on the setup that we've got. Um, the price per tag, I wanna say is somewhere between one and $200. Um, but again, that gets you a five-year warranty and they've been pretty good for us if, if anything ever goes wrong with that tag or if it starts to show some wear and tear, they'll get it replaced for you. Um, so it's not a, a complete answer on that, um, but I haven't actually set up one of these systems. I've always walked right into them. So uh, Dr. Anderson may be able to share a little bit more on that because he worked to get these systems set up that we have here. The cost really depends upon uh, how extensive your grazing system is. If you've got, you know, a 30, 40 acre farm and your cattle are coming to a common water area every single day or a common mineral feeder, or they are within 330 feet of one spot every single day reliably, then you can actually get, get, get it set up pretty cheap. The routers are uh, about a hundred bucks. Um, the system itself um, is really very cheap. It's just two or $300 uh, for, you know, to get, everything set up for the computer and whatnot. And the tags can be anywhere uh, as cheap as $80. 
to as high as $180, depending upon how much information you want. If all you want is estrus, you know, when the animals are in heat, and then of course, if they're, you know, if they're lame and all this other stuff, their activity, you can see some of their activity changes there. Um, if that's all you want, then it'll be on the cheaper end of that. If you want every single bit of, bit, bit of data that Dr. Van Velen talked about, so eating time, um, ruminating time, and then health alerts, all that stuff, uh, the cost gets a little bit higher. Um, I, the last time we checked on it, it was $180 a tag, but again, it's, it's a five year warranty and they'll replace them. If they go bad, they replace them. If you lose them, it, that's on you. Um, but we, we've actually had a very pretty dug and low incidence of loss in the, in the couple of years that we've had them. Um, and just to tag in on the estrus detection, it's extremely accurate for estrus detection. Um, we're at the 90 plus percent. Um, and honestly, it's probably higher than that because we're using visual observation as our, as our control, but visual observation isn't perfect. You know, we think we're, we think it is, but it's not. So which one's actually a little bit more accurate? You know, I mean, uh, Dr. Van Valen talked about the, the lesions that were, that went undetected. We have a, a lot of issues with estrus detection as well because, it, I mean, it's behavior and behaviors sometimes are very subtle and our ability to, to detect those behaviors sometimes aren't perfect. And so in, in our experience with the, with the cow managers for heat detection, we're, we're very happy with that and our conception rates have gone up considerably uh, to our AI since we've incorporated that technology. Yeah. And and two, on the, the tags, as you're starting to think about where you, how you might utilize those, um, you know, keep in mind that they can go from animal to animal, so um, they don't have to stay on that same animal for the whole lifetime of the tag, um, so you can move them around if you need to. Um, the other thing that I, I didn't mention there is that they do take seven days once you put the tag in to basically develop a baseline for that animal, so it kind of knows what that animal does normally. And then that way it can alert to you when that animal does something abnormal. Um, so if you're thinking about it from a health alert standpoint, especially on um, calves that we're, we're bringing in, if we're um, backgrounding or stalker and we've got calves coming in, even if we put those uh, tags in on day one, that first seven days, we're, we're not gonna have reliable data there. So um, just be thinking about that too, um, as you think about this technology. Um, Dr. Lim Cooler was also wondering if the, if, if the GPS actually, you could get it if there was an additional fee. Do either of you know that? I'm not aware that they, that that particular company has GPS as an option. They, Do they? They just, they just offered it last year. Okay. GPS is, I mean, it's, it's, it's recent and, uh, you know, it, it's an additional cost, but you, you can't get GPS. I thought about, you know, uh, trying to get it for our tags. Um, and, um, uh, I think eventually we'll probably get it because that way we can look at, you know, time of the waters, time at mineral feeders, you know, exactly where the cattle are. And, and there's a, there's a lot of research we can do with that but it's, it's just recent and I haven't seen yet the, any reliability uh, data on that. So, but they did, they did offer it last year. All right. Uh, any other questions? Um, that's really kind of some fascinating things that um, really kind of get you on that. What if um, thinking on, on this stuff, because it's a, it's amazing where technology has brought us to date and, and will will take us. Uh, and hopefully that uh, as with technologies, the cost is going to start coming down on these products as well. All right. Uh, any other last questions for Dr. Van Valen? Uh, as remember, oh, it's still up on the screen. Uh, you can see the YouTube and I'll be sending out an updated um, 
uh, calendar for the webinars, the future ones coming up, as well as the video links for the past ones. I'll be sending that out in a day or so. Uh, also, please fill out the, the survey link, and I'll try and put that in an email tomorrow maybe as well uh, with that link uh, for you to go into. If you need CAPE uh, educational programming, uh, in the signature spot, uh, just put the term beef topper. Um, and then next week, please join us again. Dr. Chris Teutsch um, is going to be talking about approaches to reclaiming heavy use areas. In the uh, past couple of years, that's been a big task. And so I'm, I'm sure that'll be a popular topic next week. Any other final questions? If not, Dr. Van Balen, thank you very much. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you guys next week. Good night.